What if I told you you could get a watch that looks like a Rolex Explorer, has a huge Japanese brand name on the dial, and it only costs $110? Well, allow me to introduce you to the Seiko 5 SNK393. Because us mere mortals can't afford a collection full of crowns, we are often left to look elsewhere for something that looks similar. I'm just super surprised that this Seiko model hasn't had much coverage here on YouTube, because for the super cheap price that you can pick this up for, it is one hell of a a good looking watch. This model is from the old school Seiko 5 range, which basically means that this watch doesn't have the best spec, but it's full of character and much more affordable than the modern Seiko 5 catalogue. It does have some quirks that take some getting used to if you haven't tried one before, but I'll cover these a little later in the video. Unquestionably, the Rolex fanboys will definitely get mad at me calling this $100 Seiko a Rolex alternative, but it does have a lot of features that are similar to the popular Rolex model. I think without the 12 and 6 applied numerals, this comparison couldn't be made. But with them using an incredibly similar font to the Explorer, it's almost like they took the numerals off the Rolex and dropped them right onto the Seiko. These applied polished markers unfortunately aren't filled with loom like the ones on the Explorer, but Seiko's fantastic Lumi Bright loom is still present on this watch. All of the baton indexes feature a plot of loom at the end of them, and those polished fence post hands also feature a generous amount. So the loom is as good as you'd expect with a Seiko watch. I think though that this watch would have been even better if it didn't feature that large three o'clock day date window. It does feature a polished frame and looks super premium for the price, but it absolutely ruins the symmetry of what could have been a perfect dial design. The dial also features some concentric circular finishing beneath the indices. These are only really noticeable when in direct sunlight, otherwise the dial just looks sterile black. But I think another massive factor to this being a Rolex Explorer alternative is the design of the case. The Rolex Oyster case is a design icon, instantly recognisable for its silhouette. Although the case on this Seiko isn't a direct copy, it does have some Oyster style traits that help with the aesthetic. The lugs are chunky with a brushed finish, the case sides are thick and feature a polished finish, but also the chunky polished bezel is almost identical to that on the Rolex. Putting the two next to each other reveals just how close the silhouette is, with the only real difference being the crown down at the four o'clock instead of up at the three. That crown is linked to this Seiko's biggest quirk. Flipping the watch over reveals the automatic movement through the display case back. This caliber is the venerable, legendary, iconic 7S26. The exact same movement that powered the uber popular Seiko SKX for so many years. If you've never tried this movement before, then you're in for a treat. This is one of the most basic, old school, prehistoric movements that you can find on a new watch. This movement was first introduced back in 1996, and that's the exact same year that I was introduced, so... I guess I'm also prehistoric now. This movement does not feature hacking seconds, and it does not feature manual winding. So if the watch is dead in the watch box, you have to give it the legendary Seiko Shuffle to get that seconds hand moving. Now I must admit, I do have a little bit of a soft spot for this movement. It's the first one I ever saw with the naked eye. So although it is a dinosaur in comparison with most modern movements, it's a beast that will be looking after you for years to come. I think that it's fair to say the most popular size of the Rolex Explorer is the 36 millimeter version. So I'm pleased to say that this Seiko model comes in with a 37 millimeter case. The lug to lug is only one millimeter shorter at 42 millimeters. And the thickness is again one less than the Rolex at 10.5 millimeters. All things considered, these dimensions are almost identical, meaning that both visually and physically, the watches are incredibly similar. But let's talk about the absolute worst part of this watch. As usual with the old school Seiko 5 range, the supplied bracelet is hot garbage. And that's being polite. This bracelet is a huge pain in the ass to size, it will rip your arm hair out for fun, and the clasp is a thing of nightmares. I didn't even bother sizing the bracelet for this one, it's genuinely that bad. Luckily, this thing is a monster on straps. Because of the black dial and polished indexes, this watch can easily be dressed up and dressed down with a simple 18mm strap change. NATO straps look incredible, leather straps amazing, and pretty much anything you throw at it will look high 
half decent, just like the Explorer, making this budget Seiko 5 a proper versatile watch for your collection. But obviously, don't fool yourself into thinking that this is the perfect watch. The 30 meters of water resistance means that it wouldn't survive a puddle. The Hardlex name for the crystal sounds super fancy, but it's a basic piece of mineral glass that will scratch if you hit it. But this Seiko delivers Rolex looks on a Timex budget. I'll leave a link in the description to buy this watch from the same website that I bought mine. Like the video, subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next one, guys. Bye for now.